What's up, everybody? I'm Icy Cat, and this is The Siege Report, your weekly podcast for all things Rainbow Six, where we break down all the latest news and information and get the perspective of a new guest that's influential in the Siege community as we break it all down. And here to introduce that first guest is my co-host, Nukem Duke. Hey guys, what's going on? So we have a unique guest. Uh, actually, we found out it's actually two of them, but I will go ahead and let them introduce themselves. We have the Dangleberries. Do they go first, though? <laughs> yeah, so my name is Alan, and I'm from the Dangleberries. So uh, there's, as Newcomb said, that there, there's actually two of us running the channel. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. But uh, yeah, yeah we, we've been, we're new to the whole Siege community scene over the last kind of year or so. And we've been working together uh, for years as friends and uh, with the kind of Call of Duty community. And we moved over to the Siege community to really see what, what this, all this hype about, about about Siege itself. And I think, Chris, you'll agree that it's one, of the, one, of, the, yeah, one of the best yeah. uh, games to ever come out over the last uh, few years, definitely, anyway. 100%. It's so unique. Um, it's a completely different aspect on, on the whole FPS community altogether, you know? Yeah, so like, is this the other guy that you usually see in the video? Because there's always like a, 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 someone's putting up the shield where someone's like boosting the other player. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's us too, that's us. It's yeah. usually, uh, would you agree, Al, I'm usually the dominant one and you always, you're always the person rocking the shield. I'm and, always, always yeah. the lackey rocking the shield, <laughs> making sure everything goes, goes to plan, yeah. yeah. Don't be fooled though, he is the mastermind behind most of our greatest yeah. spots though. So, if someone's not familiar with your channel, uh, how would you guys describe what you guys do in the Siege community for your content? Um, I'll jump in here, I like. So, it's like, um, so initially, if I was to describe to somebody what our channel is about, we were kind of, uh, we like, we're like an anti-meta, we're like an anti-meta channel for Siege. Like, we like, uh, me personally, coming from a competitive FPS background, as, along with Alan, we're always like, you know, a lot of teams like to play the meta... They watch pro players play, how they play, whatever, and we try to bring new stuff to try and throw a, a, a spanner, a spanner in the works kind of a thing, you know. So we're like, some things are very controversial, as you'll agree with me, and other things. I mean, you <laughs> see, you see pro league players like uh, noted, and others will be using spots on consulate or cafe. They actually use them throughout the pro league. Uh, yeah, I don't know yeah. if you know that, so you can you can actually see that. So it's like. While they're controversial, some of them are well within bounds and actually make some areas of the the game more playable, more workable. So that's what we're trying to do. That's what we try to do. We try to make, uh, we try to give people more options. One thing I've noticed is that when I watch your videos, you guys have a definite style. I mean, there is some mm -hmm. production value there that I find really interesting as somebody that's a professional mm -hmm. editor in my day job. You guys mm -hmm. have like uh, this great music going on, these interesting, consistent fonts and effects going on. The editing style, I mean, before you talk about a section of the map where you're saying something is happening, you'll do like this fl uh, fly-through, walk-through kind of thing, and it's just mm -hmm. really interesting style of presentation. Can you talk a little bit about like kind of why you guys chose that route? I think uh, initially when we first started doing Siege videos, we were kind of getting used to the game, getting used to the features available to us. So when we discovered this idea of making cinematics, considering it's not actually part of the game itself, we went and looked at different operators and maybe something we could use with one of those operators to create those cinematics. And we thought that that would bring a whole new aspect to the video. I think some people kind of want to get straight in there, get what they want, their tips and tricks, and then get out of there. But there's a lot of people I think want to see some sort of professionalism to the video, bring it to another level where they can sit back, watch the video, learn what they, they're seeing, and at the same time, enjoy the video at the same time. So. The music is something that we work a lot with. We, we, we know a few uh, music creators that we've become friendly with who've created tracks to work with our videos. And we've become friendly with a lot of people in the community to let us do that. And then when it comes to the cinematics, I think it's just giving that kind of flow. You'll see in some of our videos, it's like it's flowing from one hiding spot or one uh, position to another just so people can follow exactly where you're going, where this spot is in the map. And then on top of that, it just gives this really kind of like, how would you say, like tranquil feel to watching the video. Mm. You just kind of sit there and you just forget the timer. You forget how long the video is. And then all of a sudden it's over and you're like, <laughs> what? I want to see some more. So yeah. that is Absolutely. our absolute aim is making sure that people stay engaged, stay watching our content. Don't leave a minute in. Keep watching us. I guarantee you, you will enjoy it. Okay, as Chris said earlier, you know, our content is controversial. We, we dip on that line of, you know, what are you trying to do? 
but I think that we're still within a, a realm where we want to make sure that the people who are watching our videos enjoy it 100%. Uh, I have That's a cool. question. Um, part of you know the controversy, you, like what, if people are not familiar, like, you show different boost spots where you can like get on top mm -hmm. of a very building where someone can't see you. It's like all these hard stuff that people would never check. Um, so. Do you guys like come up with that yourselves? Do you like spend hours figuring this stuff? Oh, or you oh, have people oh, <laughs> You have we no have idea. Some, <laughs> like, we have some behind the scenes clips of when we actually find this kind of stuff. And I, I mean, we could make a video of our reactions. We're genuinely like excited, you know, like we, we go insane. Um, I think on average, if we were to put a video together, what we try to do is we fi try to find like one or two like overwhelmingly mind blowing spots, and then we try to throw in a, a handful of like you know smaller ones, but are still interesting. But yeah, when it comes to the big spots, like we would spend hours on maps. Uh, recently, we got some competition, but other than that, yeah. Before that, it was strictly all us. You know, it was all us. You know, we found mostly everything. Yeah, like we we kind of started the trend of doing that kind of stuff and then people followed suit and we had a lot of competition so we had to work overtime to try and make sure that we were ahead of them. So yes, hours and hours spent in custom games just tearing the maps apart, looking at every single um, area that you might not normally look at to see if there's something available there. So I think it's definitely something that um, we've been trying to kind of be at the forefront from but competition is always going to be there so you know <laughs> it's okay. a difficult thing i have one last question for you guys so a lot of people don't know like you guys live in different parts of the world and like how you guys coordinate working with each other and Ooh. upload and who does the editing who does the voiceover it's a it's a it's a, it's a joint effort i mean we're both um one video might be edited by ellen voiced over by ellen next video might be edited by me and voiced over by me it's actually um like uh, me and Ella would know when we watch a video who did what, but I, I don't think to the average viewer they could actually tell the difference. Like you Yeah, know. We're, we're very much in sync with, with the design structure. We lay it out beforehand and we work with that to make sure that we have an idea of how the voiceover, how the voiceover is going to go and how the video itself is going to go. So I think we've always mixed it up in that, re in that respect and made sure that they were always the same style and that we weren't going off in different directions and kind of getting a bit annoyed with each other. It has been absolutely been very difficult with the time differences, yeah. you know. It's I mean, an it helps eight hour difference. It yeah, helps one's in San Diego, nocturnal. one's in Poland. Or, I mean, <laughs> Ireland, Ireland, Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so mean, it is, it's, tough, it's tougher, right, 100%. Yeah. I think Alan would agree with me. It helps that I'm a nocturnal creature. So <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this guy never sleeps like at all. Like he's just, I don't know how he survives. Caffeine is at an all time level high. Like I don't, oh, yeah. he's yeah. going to blow up at some point. I'd say I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to crash soon. <laughs> 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 so most of your videos are centered around giving people information as far as like, you know, how to access these like cool spots or, you know, areas that they might not have known how to get into and things like that. Mm -hmm. But today I actually saw that you uploaded a really interesting video that was, it was almost, a, well, in fact, it was called a rant, uh, just about some, some major problems that were going on in the game and, how, you know, how that related to Operation Health and what you thought about them. Uh, can you share a little bit more with us about what that was about? Do you want me jump on, Al? Yeah, work away. Okay, so... You know, like Alan said earlier, I'm not saying we started the trend or anything, but I, I think we can agree that some of our hidden spot videos did definitely encourage other YouTubers to try and do the same thing. And what happened was a few of them were starting to get out of hand, where they would upload stuff that we knew about, that we knew was very beyond the line of controversy, it was completely unbalanced, unfair. And they posted them and it was kind of like, we can't let this happen, you know. We, we felt kind of partially responsible because... You know, we, we would post similar types of content, but they'd always be in the realm of they'd only give an advantage of the advantage you get from our spots would be of uh, element of surprise. You know, if you didn't know about the spot, you'd get caught off. But these guys are uploading spots where you're invincible, like you're unkillable. Like you, you, you can see through, you can shoot through the wall. They're basically wall breaches. And we, we were like just getting out of hand. You yeah, know what I mean? It's absolutely. Kind of, I think that was definitely a thing that like. What we posted today was a a long running issue that we were starting to have. Initially, when we started posting that kind of controversial content, I think we were always trying to make sure that we could expose these issues for them to be fixed. And it did happen. We did contact Ubisoft on numerous occasions, mm. and they did respond to us, and they did patch a lot of our content. 100%, mm. they got behind us, and they did help us to remove some of those issues from the game. But then. In the last like maybe five to six weeks, it's just kind of completely just gone off the wall with regards to new stuff 
are like gradually appearing like glitches that you would have never thought would be possible in the game, but they are now. And I think we just kind of got very frustrated. I think that's why we took a little bit of a break for the last kind of 10 days to two weeks to just kind of collect ourselves and just agree that this is something that needs to stop. And I think for everyone in the Siege community, we, we all love this game. We all love to play it. Okay, it can be frustrating at times. There's no... <laughs> There's absolutely all denying no, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's a it's a game that you're gonna love or hate, but with all these problems in it and people exposing it, it's just gonna it's gonna destroy the game. And I think the future of this game, considering it is such a unique style of game that there's nothing competing with it right now, I just don't wanna see it die because of all these problems. And I think that's something what we had to address. And I think that's why we posted that today to agree that this is the the next step is to to fix this game finally. Yeah. And make it what it is. See, so yeah. every week we keep asking our guests, what do you guys think of this current season of Operation Health? And I was wondering what your guys' thoughts on it. Will I jump in for this, Alan? Yeah, start it off, Chris. <laughs> so, um, all right. So you've heard partially, if you watched the video, Ice Kid, I know you did, that um, I was a bit ranty. So it's like I completely understand we're in the third phase of Operation Health now where they're finally addressing community uh, reported bugs and glitches. So we're like, okay, well, it's going to be over soon. I mean, Operation Health is scheduled to end, what, 27th of this month, 27th of August? Or the same Something time as the that, COVID, yeah. I think. So yeah. it's like um, when the season ends. So our thoughts were these bugs still haven't been fixed. I mean, personally, I love the new hit registration. I know a lot of people are complaining about it, but I genuinely feel it. I feel that the hit, re hit registration is much better now. I feel that the server tick rates are definitely noticeable. I feel that the one set matchmaking was a huge improvement. I mean, me and Ellen were waiting in a particular lobby before the update for over 40 minutes uh, yeah. without realizing, yeah. you know, editing a video or like, why don't we still have a game? What the hell is going on? You know, so <laughs> yeah. that was a big issue. So um, we're happy that all those are fixed. Uh, a lot of people are just giving Ubisoft a lot of unnecessary hate, I feel. I mean, they've done, they took a brave decision to step, step back and stop publishing content to fix a game. Not a lot of companies would have the courage to do that. I mean, you know, a lot of companies would announce that they're not dropping content that you've paid for a season pass, and that's that's almost like that's like that's like company suicide, you know. But I think they trusted the community to trust them, and I still kind of do trust them. They have a long time left. They have like over a month of a left of Operation Health to fix things. Yeah, I, th I would I would agree with that. I think like Operation Health has been a little bit bumpy. There's no doubt about that. I think what they initially promised to us was that they would work with us as a community to fix these problems and make sure that they were resolved by the end of Operation Health. And we're kind of at this stage where it's coming to an end and we're still like, did they do enough? And that's the question everyone's asking themselves. Did they step up and do the job they said they would, considering they removed content from people who've paid money for uh, to, to, you know the season. I know the season pass is only for getting extra a week or whatever and all that kind of stuff. But I still think that it's something that a lot of people are going to be like, did they do enough to fix this game? Did they enough? And I, like from a, a game develop, I've I've where I studied game development in university. Um, I actually have a game development company myself, so I understand how difficult it actually is to fix all these issues in such a short period of time. That's always going to be a problem for any development company. So I would never say they've done enough. Um, I think that they've fixed issues that were definitely massive problems in the game and people are constantly uncovering new ones and that's with any game. I think any game you look at online, you're going to find massive glitches and problems and controversy that people are always going to bring to people's attention. That's unfortunate. Communities are massive. There's hundreds of thousands of people playing these games. You're going to come across these issues. And I think it's inevitable that, you know, they are never going to be able to keep up with the community. I mean, there's only a select group of developers sitting in an office and there's millions of people playing the game. Mm -hmm. You're going to have that problem where yeah. you're never going to be able to keep up with those people. And I think that's why we've posted some of the content in a way to expose it. And we've, we've sent yeah. it to Ubisoft directly and told them this is something that is huge. Like there's a new glitch that came out recently where it's infinite dock health, where you can give... Yeah. What? Doc yeah, yeah. Infinite stim packs into his arm, and he's off to go, and he'll never die. And like, that that must be an elite great. doc or something. Yeah, yeah like that is yeah. madness, and that's something that needs to be addressed. And I think that's why we did the video today. We posted on the forum to make people go on there and vote it and share that forum thread because it needs to be shown to them so that they can fix these issues. But overall, myself and Chris are in agreement that Operation Health has done stuff. But oh, yeah. I wouldn't say it's 
enough right now. I hope that they will bring out with this next update that they will work more on those issues, but I think it's like still kind of on the fence about how they're going to approach it. And as I said, you know, it does take a lot of time for these guys to work together to fix these issues. And with new ones coming out every day, they're trying to prioritize them. And that's always going to be a problem, you know? Yeah, yeah. With exactly. Operation Health, they had three pillars that they were essentially trying to go mm-hmm. after. The first one was, of course, yeah. one-step matchmaking, which I think we can all agree has really streamlined Perfect. the process and made things good. Uh, Alpha yeah. Packs was another one. And then, you know, of course, there were some other things in there, like bug fix sprints, as they called them, and uh, the other big one being the servers, that they were going to get like, mm. these new servers going. They were going to have a 60 tick rate, whereas before they had a 50 tick rate, but it was variable, and sometimes it would go up or down with a variable tick rate. But uh, so these are being tested currently on the technical test server at the moment, and they said that they will be rolling these out toward the end of Operation Health, but also kind of overlapping into the next season as well with rolling out these servers and things. How do you think that they've, you know, uh, as far as the way they've approached that, that it's kind of bleeding into the next season, but also what it's going to bring to stability to the game? What do you think about that? Ask your average competitive player in ranked, the number one thing everyone complains about is connection, right? You know what I mean? Like hit registration. So, (laughs) you know, so I mean, they're addressing, um, if they can find a way to make the, the latency... Uh, bet, like to make the latency better, hit regist- hit, make the hit registration better. I think people are just gonna love that. Like they're gonna, especially all the the higher up tier people that like. I know it's kind of fifty fifty whether it is connection half the time, but you know everyone everyone loves to blame their connection on whether why they didn't get the kill or whatever. So I think it's definitely gonna bring um. It's, it's gonna bring some players back. It's gonna keep players playing the game, and it's gonna make to transitioning into next season is going to make the next DLC more popular in my that's, opinion. That's, that's absolutely the ultimate aim, I think, is they have to make sure that what they're bringing to the table over the next kind of month or so is going to bring back the people that they've lost. And that is one of the biggest problems they've had is that a huge amount of community. I'm sure a lot of YouTubers have taken breaks because they know that there's a problem with yeah. it. You know? yeah. They've just yeah. stepped away from making videos because they know that this game is a fucking mess. You know, It is oh, a yeah. problem for them to, to post content on. You see, like, you know, even with Serenity, he's posting videos, and it's, like, it's it's showing the issues with the game. And you've even I've even seen it watching Pro League. There's actually glitches happening in the in the actual yeah, Pro League yeah, matches, yeah. and you're sitting there like, is this actually, is, this is insane, you know? Like the crazy, is, yeah, the crazy like, long-arming through the wall? The what long matches arming, that? Yeah, long-arming. Yeah. There's even been Valkyrie cam spots that were completely not not supposed to be yeah. in there oh, that have appeared on, in there. On Oregon? I mean, that's... Yeah, mm. on Oregon, like that, that's that's something you just don't want to see, and that's like the pro league is kind of advertising the game to people who have may not have seen it before, and they're watching it, and they're like, this is this is unreal. But when they see that mm. kind of stuff, it kind of pushes them away a little, and that's why YouTubers have taken a break. I think that's one of the reasons why we took a break. We tried to kind of sit back and realize, like something has to be done about this, and their main goal is to bring back those people, and I think that's absolutely one hundred percent that they what they have to do. So one of the main things that brings back people is like the new season, new new content, maps, and as well as operator changes the meta, makes the game like refreshing again. So there was possibly some potential leaks of the new operators. Uh, we may it's unconfirmed, so it, it, mm-hmm. take this with a grain of salt. Uh, there was a picture of a po- potentially Polish operator as well as a new weapon or attachment for her weapon, and as well as a Hong Kong a female operator. And um, I, don't, I don't know what your guys' thoughts on that so far. I've, I've, uh, I've only seen the image of the Polish operator, and because of the, um, you know, they're changing the character models for Valkyrie and stuff. So when I seen it initially, I was like, that doesn't look like a, that doesn't look like a character design from Siege. Like actually, I think one of the top comments, one of the Facebook posts, was something like, "This looks like something straight out of Grand Theft Auto V or something." You know, just the, how the character was designed didn't look like it fit the game. So it was a lot of speculation. It was fake. Like it's a spec. It, it is speculation. But um, then when I seen that they changed the Valkyrie uh, models, I was like, "It's poten- It's it's possible. It could be real." Um, I personally don't like to look into that kind of stuff. Alan's the big information like information geek when it comes to that stuff. So. I'm sure Alan will know a lot more than yeah. I do on, on terms well, of Well, I mean, he, he's right. I, I've, I've looked at all this kind of stuff. I've seen <laughs> all these leaks. I've seen what they've, you know, they leaked about Hong Kong operators with Caltrop and Dazzler and all the, the different file names that they've dropped and all the information and that apparently it's a theme park is the map and all these different things. And, you know, does it hurt the game? It can. I mean, a lot of people will be kind of like, 
initially like, okay, is this what this operator does? And is this the kind of map they're going to bring? Like, honestly, personally, I don't know what they can do if the map is a theme park. I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see how they're going to design that map. I, um, it's something that's going to be interesting to see. So uh, I think looking at the weapons and these uh, these new abilities and things that they're trying to, that they've leaked, I really can't comment on it until I see that they can fix what's wrong with already the operators that are in the game. You know? I, think, right. I, I think the speculation builds up. I think yeah. that speculation yeah, like, like so is I think it a, was a legitimate leak, you know, you just mm. don't know. I just think that it, it could it could be Ubi's, you know, it could be Ubisoft sneaking in there, throwing <laughs> out a leak, you know, yeah. trying to build a pipe for the <laughs> hey guys, know, don't like, focus on operation health. <laughs> well the interesting yeah, thing that was surrounding that was the day that all of that leaked was <laughs> also the day that Ubisoft announced that they had had ten pro players out to kind of mm. see what was new with the game. And then that same day after Ubisoft <laughs> had posted that on Twitter that hey, we had these yeah. ten guys out to look at it, all of a sudden you know, mm -hmm. there's a couple of new images. So, it's you know, very interesting, all right? Yeah, who knows yeah, if like, they took pictures with their cell phones or whatever, but clearly sure. there seemed to be a coincidence going on there in that timing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, causation and correlation, guys. Causation <laughs> correlation. <laughs> well, well, personally, my thoughts on the leaks is like, you know, I think it, it hurts us overall as gamers. You know, in the past, uh, Ubisoft used to invite pros to test out uh, the Japanese operators, and, you know, they leaked Japanese operators. And so Skull they kind of stopped. And Skull Rain, yeah, they, they leaked Skull Rain. So, mm -hmm. And these were professional uh, Rainbow Six players. And they're like, okay, we're tired of leaks. You know, they're not following NDA. So they took a break on that in Velvet Shell. And Velvet Shell launch was a huge mess. Helbano was breaking games. People couldn't play the game. And, they're, and, and like, you know, during Operation Health, I, it's kind of weird that they, they brought them back, you know, like, hey, let's bring them to the studios instead of do this testing where everyone's at home. Uh, we'll have you guys sign. And then these leaks come out the day that, you know, they brought them in. And, you know, if if we don't have people testing a game outside of development, it's, we're going to be, like, have a buggier launch. And it's kind of yeah. tough for me and, me and I see, like, we speculate on a lot of potential news. And, yeah. like, when I first found out, I was just hoping Ubisoft could squash this leak. Uh, but it, it just blew, like, wildfire. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, that's why I said that, you know, I don't want to look at these new leaks because they haven't fixed what's with the other operators already. That's already an issue. And like, as you said, when Abana came out, she was a mess and has been for a long time. Like her hitboxes were all over the place for a very long period of time. And I think and her pellets, her pellets, yeah, and the pellets yeah, was so. only fixed there only recently in a recent update. I think you look at it, uh, most of the issues I'm seeing from a lot of people is they're not getting a headshot. You know, that's the thing I'm that yeah. people are complaining about like 24 seven. All I hear is I shot her in the face or I shot him in the face and there was <laughs> no the ash. Yeah, mainly Ash. Ash Nevada. Ash Nevada, yeah. Please talk to you about Ash. I don't even want to talk about Ash, to be honest. No, so I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't want to really uh, look more into these leaks and all these issues until they fix what's going on right now. And Operation Health is something they've been slowly moving along with, but just haven't, you know, really pushed at it. And I hope this last update will do a bit more, but you can already see there's just people posting new stuff every day with problems with the game, and that's a scary thing. Yeah. It really is. Um, I have a question. Uh, I know you guys don't want to talk about this potential leak, but they, they did the, one of the picture in the leak has a potential something that could change the game for a lot of us is like a one of uh, the weapons the operator had had like a, she looked like she was holding a handgun or a mm -hmm. secondary pistol and there was like a sight a, a scope on it like a red now, dot. Oh, like a red dot. So yeah. since Icy Cat, you're more on the technical side and uh, the strategic side. What do you think if they add a scope to a game? Uh, for secondaries. Well, I think that it's something that a lot of people have been asking for because one problem that I notice when I aim down sights with the pistol is you're essentially covering whatever it is you're aiming at, uh, which is not something you get so much when you're doing it with a primary weapon. Mm -hmm. So with the pistols, you're you're almost obscuring your own line of sight sometimes because you know the 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 iron sight posts on there are so small. Uh, so that would allow you to be able to line up your targets a lot more. Uh, accurately with still being able to see your line of sight uh, and I think that that might be an interesting thing now we don't know if this is something that's specific to this one operator again this is all speculation if right. this picture was even a legitimate leak or not but if mm -hmm. it was and if this is not just that operator's ability, if this is a whole new class of attachments like we saw with some other things came out when we had like the angled foregrip and some other things, um, you know, I mean, for instance, what would this do to somebody that uses their pistol primarily when you have like a Caveda 
who that's that's her ability centers around her pistol. If she gets access to a new feature like this, will that make her that much more powerful and indirectly buff that? You know, what does that mean for the broader game? Yeah, abort. <laughs> no <laughs> honestly, honestly, red dots on Kevy. I don't want to hear anymore. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm out of here as well. Not, not sticking around <laughs> for that. No, see, yeah. like personally, I think Alan would agree with me. Like, um, pistols are pretty good in Siege. The only thing that's you know, they're. I mean, they kill everything. Kills in one bullet to the head, right? I think what what uh, damage is not necessarily an important thing in siege. What matters is accuracy, recoil, fire rate, and pistols have a pretty unlimited fire rate as long as you have a trigger finger, or whatever, and they're fairly accurate. Uh, obviously, with the exception of the De- Desert Eagle and the the Magnum. Magnum's not too bad, but you, you you get my point. It's like what balances the pistols out and makes them not a viable primary option because, I mean, in other, in other shooter games, people run around with pistols like CSGO. They'll, I know they'll have the, whatever, the, the money rounds, whatever, but, like, the last thing I want to see happen to Siege is a Kavira running around with a red dot shooting me across the map because she has crazy accuracy on my head. You know, it's like, uh-huh. I think maybe certain operators, like, could you imagine, like, IQ's pistol is very good. Can you imagine yeah. that with a red dot? It'd be insane. You should just run around with the red dot. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a. Uh, if it is real, you see it in other games. You know, you see it in Call of Duty. They have attachments yeah. on pistols. Um, I just don't know if it is. Uh, is it the right fit for Siege to have it on them? Uh, it have to be very specific to operators. If you like, as we said already, you know, if you have it on Kavira, it's that's not something you already want. Like she's already got a very powerful, damaging pistol. To throw a scope on it for her to look already. You see, with even with the like, the SMG11 when they had the ACOG scope on it. Oh, I mean, that yeah, was just yeah. absolute yeah. madness. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. That gun was just so OP because of that. And I really hope that if they are doing this, they take the right approach to it and they don't mess it up. Because, again, they've already got so many other things on their plate. They don't want to make more mess. And I feel like that's something that they've been doing a little bit. They fix something, something new happens. And that's always with every game. As I said, you know. I've worked in game development, so I see how difficult it is to fix many issues at one point in time. And that's always going to be a case with any game. But with Siege especially, because it's such a unique game that has been designed, it's one of the first of its kind in the way it works and how the operators work and the game style, it's always going to be a lot harder for them to do that. Yeah. There's no doubt. So talking about which operators you know, and their abilities are maybe balanced or not balanced, uh, and, and to your point, like when they did introduce new categories of attachments, they limited it so only certain operators had access to the angled foregrip or only certain ones had the extended barrel, what have you. Uh, but today, uh, as at least as of the, the recording of this video, uh, they put up on the forum and the subreddit a survey that was asking uh, the community's opinion on what they thought were like the, the top three best operators or the top three worst and then which ones were like the best operator for new players and the worst operator for new players. Uh, okay. And so just as kind of an extension of that, I just wanted to kind of get your guys' opinion. Is uh, So let's start with maybe the new player question first. If you had somebody that's completely brand new to the game, uh, just real quick for each of you, which one operator do you think would you would recommend and be like, yes, that's a good one for you to start with, and then that's like one you should never touch because it's too complex? For new players... I think Thatcher and Thermite are a good option, right? I mean, do you know, kind of... I know, no, 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 hold on, let me explain this. I mean, for casual and ranked, they're a good... Um, I mean, in high, up, in high up levels, you have to be really precise and specific when you use those operators in conjunction. But when it comes to newer players, you don't want a newbie running around with Cavi, right? You don't want, to, you know, you don't want someone running around kind of roaming, trying to go for kills. You want them to learn how the objectives work. You want to learn how to... Open up areas around the objective. You want to really get them objective orientated when they're first starting off because, you know, last thing you want is people giving out to them for being, you know, I would say the word of a kill, kill something. Anyway, you know, they run around and just get kills all day. And I think Thermite, Thatcher are good options. Jeez, I mean, I, I would say Shield too, but. <laughs> I mean, they're actually, you don't want to know with a shield that actually does take skill surprisingly okay. to run around with a mountain so um, like yeah, that, 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 like the, yeah the question you're asking is if for someone new and so someone you, gotta, new, yeah. you got yeah for so, if someone's new coming to the game and they're looking at what's the if someone asks the question what's the best operator to use you got to think to yourself well that's the wrong they're, question, they're new it? they're new to the game you know so 
you have to be very particular about what operator you want them to use. I mean, you already know what the best operators are. You already look at Ash. Like, Ash is just crazy. Now they give him her stuns, she's just god mode kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, she's Running around crazy. like crazy. Um, her hitbox is already a disaster. You're, <laughs> you're already in trouble when she's running at you in the map. You're in big trouble. Mm, so, yeah. of course, if a new person knew that, they'd probably run Ash, you know? Um, personally, I, I normally run Twitch. I think Twitch is a great operator. I love using Twitch because of her F2. Her F2 or the Famous is just an incredible That's weapon. Um, as long as you can control the recoil, you are a boss using Twitch. There's mm. no doubt about that. Um, and then you look at, like, you know, best operators, worst operators. I think Siege has kind of gone a little bit with, you know, some of the operators are never used anymore. You know, Tachanka is always, Lord Tachanka is always a, Tachanka. something that's kind of left <laughs> Give on him the thermal fence. vision. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I think he's kind of always left there, even though he's, like, the god of Siege. I yeah. just think that, yeah. you know, something he's needs to be done mean. in terms of pick rates. Pick rates are a problem on Siege. You know that already. There's always the same operators you see when you're playing. Even in Pro League, they always run the same stress, the same kind of, operators i think they need to do something to kind of increase those pick rates on yeah. other guys they've tried right. it i, I want to see iq i want to see iq and capcan get more picks i think yeah. they can actually buff capcan and at the same time buff iq just by buffing capcan like i think if they made that this this might be controversial i want to hear what you guys think actually i'm going to throw a question your way how would you like to see a capcan laser that is invisible you have to actually check the door frames okay. Uh, it would slow down the pace of the game, too. I'll, I'll let so. Icy Cat answer that first, and then I have my own little spiel uh -huh. about what you guys answered. All right, well, all right. If you remember, there was actually a glitch. Oh, gosh, what was that? Back mm. in Dustline, hey, yeah, maybe? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was season, season, one, season, season one. Season one or season two. Yeah. I think it was during Dustlight. There was somebody figured out a way to glitch it so that you would have an invisible laser beam on there. Now yeah. this is when you could still see the other end of the the screw mm -hmm. attachment coming through this the light. other side of the wall, but. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I ever actually got killed by any of the invisible lasers <laughs> because no, because I was I was always I always looked for the emitter box because mm, yeah. now the the strategy of uh, at, remember at the time this is when the laser beam still looked like a lightsaber uh, and since yeah, yeah. They, they brought the, <laughs> the, um, the brightness of it down a bit so at the time there wasn't a strat to leave it in an open doorway that you would just run through so you were yeah. always looking when you were breaking the door open so I would always break it low and look for the emitter so I didn't have the problem of running into it plus I ran a lot of IQ and so you're telling me that see them. every single time. You have okay. never, ever <laughs> ran into an invisible Capcan by looking for Adam, the emitter in every single room now that you've Adam's ran into. Like a, Adam's like <laughs> a Capcan. Cat's a very <laughs> patient player. He will use a full, full four minutes and three minutes yeah, of yeah. the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, like, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, as I said, like, quickly yeah. answering it, if you're new, like, Ash Yeager is everyone's thing. That's the thing people complain about. That's all the haters saying that, oh, you're an Ash Yeager main. Okay. If you told I, a new person that, then that's it, you know? Okay, I have a completely different perspective than you guys. But first okay. of all, um, actually, um, I've been uh, part of Diamond Rank in the last four seasons of Siege on PC, and Capkin current what current one still surprises people, and you still can get Capkin kills on high yeah. platinum and diamond level. It, it still surprises yeah. uh -huh. you because you don't expect it. Um, two. For beginners, I suggest picking a class that's not vital to a team because, like, Thermite, if he dies, he can't open. If he doesn't know Bandit okay. Trick, he doesn't see lasers on the wall. Uh, I suggest picking, like, a Sledge. You know, you can lose Sledge, but he can still open stuff unless there's a castle. And I suggest, like, a Rook, unless someone wants Rook and kills you for a Rook and says Rook mine. But, like, Rook, <laughs> Doc, uh, anyone that's stationary on the site that doesn't, like, take away major gadget ability is a way to learn the game. And I always suggest start situations. It kind of st it doesn't do a great job, but it helps you get into what Siege is. Oh, so yeah. that's I, that's my suggestion. Like, pick someone that's not viable, that's detrimental to take an objective. I 100% agree at a higher level. Uh, but with skill-based matchmaking, if you're new to the game, if you're truly new and you're level one and you're playing casual, I I I completely see what you're saying. Versatility with Sledge, you get to you don't have to. You're not the, your team's not dependent on you. You just get to learn the game, whatever. But what are they learning though? Like you know, they're kind of just learning to, the the map design. They're learning how the mechanics work, and then later on they're gonna have to learn how the objectives work. I mean, if I remember correctly, I think the first operator I ever picked was Castle and Castle and Ash. 
And I remember just having complete anxiety attacks in the objective of playing this castle. You know, I just locked myself <laughs> off. It was it was the first it was the first night. I'd never played Siege before. It was midnight release. I castled off the room and I was sitting in the corner literally shaking in real life. You know, was, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's one experience that um I think everyone that goes to play Siege initially should try to experience is they should try to understand the objective first and then learn how to roam and manipulate the map. Yeah. I think it's I mean it's 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 subjective it's your personal it's it's your own personal opinion you know um, um neither one is right or wrong it depends on the person so Hey guys, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's awesome to see the uh, different side of community where you find this strategic style and also that what you said it was something different in Siege that was like wanting to continue watch and your time just flies by. So if people haven't checked out any of your channels, how can they find you guys? Type in the Dangleberries on YouTube. Um, it's T-H-E-D-A-N-G-L-E-B-E-R-R-I-E-S. And uh, we should come up, hiding spots, whatever, so... Thank you guys so much for coming on the show and my co-host Icy Cat. If you guys want to see any of your favorite Siege members on this podcast, feel free to reach them any way possible and tell them to contact me and we'll try to get them in. And if you have any suggestion and feedback for the Siege Report, leave in the comments below. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.